What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today it is a painting tutorial for a Mandalorian helmet. So I've been doing my research as best as possible and I finally come up with a method that should work and give a nice chrome finish to what we're going to be working on today. Now, the helmet in question is a resin casting from my good friend Chris Robinson over at GC 5 Effects. You know Chris usually specializes in bat suit pieces, but Chris also offers a Mandalorian helmet casting. Just received it from him and it's honestly one of the most accurate helmets I have ever seen in my entire life. It is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful in every single way and every single angle. But before we go any further, I just want to give a massive thank you to the sponsor of this video, the Star Wars Card Trader app by Tops. Star Wars Card Trader allows you to collect some of your favorite characters, trade with fellow rebels from all over the globe, as well as some exclusive perks. You get new digital collectibles available every day. You can claim free daily bonus packs, digital collectibles, claim free currency to increase pack opening power. Say that 20 times. And not to mention you can follow, trade, and collect with fans all around the world. So that means you can follow me on the username Cosplay Chris. Now this being a Mando theme build today, it would only be fair that I gather up some Mando cards as you can see right here, including a few of the child that are just too damn adorable. Now with season two just a couple of days away, I should probably mention that the Star Wars Card Trader app will have content for every episode of this season and not to mention these awesome looking dual perception cards that you see right here. Love the design, love the look of the characters, loving the look of their costumes. So tops are gonna be all over it in terms of content for season two within this app. So head on over to the App Store now and give the Star Wars Card Trader app by Tops a crack. Again, a massive thank you to the awesome crew at Tops for sponsoring this video. And that being said, let's get on with today's build. Ah, just kidding. So here is the helmet in all its glory. Again, it is a beautiful resin casting that Chris has done. It just has all the right details. It looks perfect. It fits my head perfectly. If you're familiar with trying to paint one of these, it can be quite tricky. So the original paint that they used on the screen used helmets is called a Lumlistar. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. If not, I'm very sorry for butchering the name. It's from Imperial Surface and it's pretty much next to impossible to get it here in the country. So we have to have a plan B, a backup plan. So the first step before we do any painting is we're just gonna be doing some cleaning up within the visor housing area here with a Dremel just to make sure it's all nice and flat. So when we do install the visor, it's gonna sit flush to the entire inside of this shape here. We're also gonna be doing some wet sanding with a very fine grit sandpaper just to get an almost glass-like smooth finish over majority of the helmet because that is going to help with the painting process. In terms of the painting process, I'm going to be using some spray paints, some specially made spray paints that I've never used before, but I've been told is a must for painting something like this. It's what's called a 2K paint, mostly used for automotive use. And the reason why it's called 2K is because it's a part A, part B that are mixed together, and it's actually a chemical reaction. Usually with rattle can spray paints that I use, you have to rely on the elements for it to dry. Whereas with 2K paint, it's a chemical reaction and it will set at a certain time. And that just helps with the curing process. Once it's cured, it is cured, it is set, it is rock hard. Now, because I can't get a Lumla Star here in Australia, I do have a backup. I'm gonna be using Alclad 2 Chrome. I've heard nothing but good reviews about it. So the 2K paint that we're gonna be using is a gloss black and I can get these pre-made at a place called R&D here in Sydney and they come in rattle cans. You have about eight hours to use the rattle cans before it will seize up inside because of that chemical reaction. After that, we're then gonna be using the Alclad 2 Chrome in an airbrush and very lightly just rotating the helmet and going over and over and over until we reach that happy medium. And that gloss black is gonna complement that chrome and give it that nice mirror finish. Now in terms of clear coating it, I still am a little bit wary. So I went ahead and bought a 2K gloss clear. So what you do is you pop the bottom open and you pull and twist this and then it mixes the two chemicals in there and that's when you have that limited amount of time to use it. So the risk you run of using a clear coat on chrome is you do sometimes lose the actual chrome effect and it can actually dull it back a few shades and then you lose that effect. So I'm gonna see how the Alclad goes in terms of drying and handling with oils from the fingers. But from what I'm told, you really do have to seal it up if you want it to last. And apart from that, just some subtle weathering here and there and all the nooks and crannies. So the First step is we're gonna be doing some dremeling on the inside here where the visor is gonna be housed and also some wet sanding. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, 
Okay, now that all the wet sanding is done, the next step is we're gonna get some isopropyl alcohol and a static cloth. And we're just gonna lightly spray over the helmet and give it a wipe down with the cloth. And what that's gonna do is get rid of any final grease or grime and just dust before we go ahead and prime the helmet. Now the primer that we're going to be using is a special automotive primer. It's a two-in-one primer gray 4603 and you know the paint is good where they don't have to worry about having a clever name for it. If it's just a product code 4603 for example, you know it's good. You know this stuff is going to do the job. Okay, so I just got back from R&D Automotive Paint with a pre-mixed 2K gloss black aerosol can that they mix up for you on the spot. This cost me 30 bucks and they did also warn me I've got about eight hours working time with it before the chemical reaction happens inside there. Essentially, all that paint will become a solid. The gentleman who helped me out also suggested dunking the can in warm water and he said, and I quote, it'll just go on like silk. How good does that sound? So, we're gonna mix that shit out of this bad boy, dunk it in some warm water. I've got the helmet here with a plastic bag over it because I do not want any dust or any contaminants floating around here getting onto it right before we paint. So when I'm ready to paint, I'll literally just debag and go for it because any contaminants, any dust that hits the surface, especially with 2K paint, you're gonna get what's called fish bubbles or fish eyes where it'll just separate. The paint will separate where the dust particles are and that is something we do not want. I am hoping that no particles I've got on this. We're gonna find out. If I do, it's a $30 fuck up. So let's get shaken and let's get dunking and let's get spraying. Now he said just warm water, he didn't say boiling water, so apparently this is something you should do for metallic paints as well, metallic spray paints, whether it be gold or silver or whatnot. He said it just makes the application a lot easier and it makes the paint adhere to the surface and spread a lot easier. Spread a lot easier. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't want to get the nozzle wet. Why'd you take the cap off, you idiot? Hey, 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 hey. Now, of course, a bit of a common sense disclaimer here when working with spray paint, especially 2K paint, always wear a respirator. This stuff can be quite gnarly and tenacious. As amazing as it works and as amazing as it is for stuff like this, it's not worth risking your health, geeks and geekheads, so wear your respirator. Ah, yes! All right, moment of truth. Alrighty geeks and geekettes, it is time to chrome the Mandalorian helmet. So I've let the 2K gloss black fully uh, cure overnight. And look at that, how beautiful that is. Look at that reflection. And yeah, there's a skull under there. So the next step is we're gonna airbrush on our Alclad 2 Chrome. So here's a test I did on a resin skull casting. So that is the exact same 2K gloss black that we used on the helmet. Now keep in mind this casting is very porous, so it's not gonna be as reflective as this will be because this is quite smooth, whereas this is quite porous. And then there's the Alclad test I did with the airbrush. So you can see the half-half, and I'm very happy with that. Even for something that's so porous, it looks quite great. I'm very happy with it and it's it sticks like shit to a blanket. It's amazing. So here's the air compressor I'll be using. I've had this air compressor since I was in grade 12, believe it or not. And here's the airbrush. So I'm gonna be loading the Alclad into this particular one. And it's on a Lazy Susan, so it's just going to be a matter of misting it on and just rotating the helmet until you reach that happy medium. Um, it's just a matter of finding that perfect balance of not too chromey but just that perfect reflection that the screen used helmet gives off in the show.
All right, geeks and geekettes, I am beyond happy with how this has turned out. I honestly, for some reason, thought it was going to stuff up or the finish would not be this perfect, but I am so over the moon with it so far. So, I've let it sit overnight, even though the Alclad literally dries within 10 minutes. Still want it to properly set. The next step you want to do is get an anti-static cloth or a cloth similar to this and give it a rub down and a polish because that is going to get rid of the excess chrome dust that we sprayed on that's left over. Now it is time to clear coat this piece because we want to clear coat this before we do any weathering because the more you handle a raw piece like this that hasn't been sealed, the oils will break down the chrome over time. I've learned that. Um, a good friend of mine, Jackson Rupert, who has helped me with that amazing Freddy bust, gave me some stellar advice. So. The next step is actually on behalf of Jackson's request and he also suggested it. So we are going to be applying the 2K gloss lacquer. So this is a special can where you have to pull the pin here and it activates the chemical reaction within the can. So out of respect to Jackson, I'm not going to show the method in how I apply this purely because Jackson requested that, but this is what you should be using to seal up and clear coat your piece if you are going this route. So like I said, out of respect to Jackson, I'm not going to be showing you how I apply it, but I guess the best hint I can get is don't go full ham with this stuff. That's all I can suggest. So I'm just going to give it a nice polish all over and I am seriously stoked with this Geeks and Geek Ads. This is something new, this is something new that I've learned in terms of new, using new paints and it's amazing. It's, it, it's good when things just turn out and just work out. So I'm excited to start weathering this and then obviously we can move on to the visor and then call it a day. Pull down and twist to release activator. Oops. Okay, so I've let the gloss lacquer set and unfortunately it did dial back the chrome finish just the slightest, but unfortunately it's inevitable. That is going to happen when you seal up a piece like this when using a chrome spray, but it actually works. I really love this finish now, Geeks and Geekettes. It may have dialed it back a bit, but it's going to work in our favor and especially with the next step. So. I don't know if you guys will notice if the camera will pick it up. I've just done a test, a weathering test on the back here. And what we're going to be using is Winton Oil Color. We're actually going to be using a burnt sienna. So it's just a matter of getting very little on a brush and going in all the crevices and wiping away the excess. The weathering on the Mando helmets is quite subtle and there are different looks to the helmet throughout the series. I did notice, you know, from set photos and promo photos of season two, it's as if he's had it cleaned or buffed. But in season one, it is quite muted, but I do love this look. And I think just having oil stains in all the crevices is gonna make it look a trillion bucks. You also have to go into this part here on the visor, just above the visor and make that a solid black line. Geeks and Geekettes, the next and final step in this build is the visor. So there are a few options you have for doing the visor. Number one, you can get a clear piece of plastic and spray a dark translucent spray over it. You can also dye your plastic with a special poly dye. But in this case, we're going to be going with very, very, very darkly tinted Perspex. This is from a place in Sydney called Plastics. And I'll just give you guys a good idea and just show you how tinted it can be. And then when you put it over the lens, you can see straight through it. So it's almost polarizing to say the least. So what I got is a 60 by 60 sheet. Now the exact product name, it doesn't really have one. Literally the product code is 5112. And like I said, a, I got a 60 by 60 sheet. So I've gone ahead and measured up exactly where I need to cut. So it's gonna allow a bit of a lip to go inside the helmet because we're gonna be using double-sided adhesive tape to fix it inside the helmet. So there is gonna be a bit of heat required. We're gonna be hitting this piece 
predominantly the top part with a paint stripper gun and I'm going to have it resting on a piece of PVC pipe, a quite large gauge piece of PVC pipe that's almost the same curvature as the helmet itself. It's just going to help it nestle inside the helmet nice and perfect. Then once that's done, we're going to call it a day. So thanks very much for watching guys, absolutely and utterly over the moon with the end result of this. I've learned so much along the way and it's really built up my confidence with using 2K paint and I can't wait to apply this type of method that you saw in this video to other props and other projects. A massive thank you to Chris Robinson at GC5FX for this beautiful casting, Jackson Rupert for your amazing advice as well as James Phelan of Feel Good Cosplay. Guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. Where is that child? <laughs>